Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to part four of our uh, series on renal tumors beyond renal cell, pearls, pitfalls, and key diagnostic findings. And we left off last time speaking about transitional cell carcinoma and how sometimes it's a very difficult diagnosis. You look at this case, this adenopathy, this infiltration of the right kidney, perhaps my first thought would be a papillary or clear cell RCC. But then you do recognize that there's involvement of the pelvis, but of course that could be still due to a renal cell carcinoma. And it's a large bulky tumor involving more than half the kidney. We typically think about TCCs as smaller tumors, but to make the point, these can be bulky. I showed you before examples where it involved the renal vein. Here's a nice example showing you the extensive adenopathy that can be present as well. And this was a transitional cell carcinoma, just a very nice example. And here it is in arterial phase through excretory phase. With the excretory phase, you can see here showing you that there's a loss of the calyces. When you have um, a clear cell or papillary, the calyces can be distorted, but they're typically present. Here they're amputated, and maybe that's a very helpful sign of transitional cell carcinoma as well. And here it is with the cinematic rendering. Another case, left kidney, infiltrating tumor left kidney. It, there's adenopathy in the left periodic region. There's a little nodule in the posterior perirenal space. You could think about carcinoma. You could even think about infiltration. Maybe it's lymphoma. And when you look at the coronals, nearly the entire kidney is infiltrated by this process. So I'm thinking of an infiltrating tumor, and then I'm also looking at what looks roughly at L2. There's an infiltrating tumor in bone. There's a lytic lesion here. And transitional cells probably are less likely to involve bone than a clear cell might be. But again, infiltration, not very vascular. Could this be lymphoma? That would be a really good thought. This ended up being a transitional cell carcinoma. Transitional cells, as we have to understand, can be aggressive with adenopathy, with IVC and renal vein involvement, as well as bone involvement. And again, extensive involvement of the entire kidney. And when you look at the later phase imaging, you're going to see the loss of the calyces, which you don't see here on the excretory phase imaging. So again, use that as a helpful sign. The diagnosis of TCC is usually made very easily on your analysis, but not always. You can have a TCC in a negative urinalysis. And remember, TCCs can also be in the ureter, the bladder, or contralateral kidney, even at presentation. So make sure you look very, very carefully. And here it is with a volume rendering of that patient's infiltrating left renal mass. Now, I mentioned lymphoma for the last case. When I think about a tumor that infiltrates the kidney, though usually enlarges the kidney, can infiltrate and distort the calyces, you've got to be thinking about lymphoma. Now, the thing about renal lymphoma, it has a range of appearances on CT and MR. It can be unilateral. It can be bilateral. It can be a focal mass, be it solitary, or it can be multiple. It could be a diffuse infiltrating process, or it can be diffuse infiltrating of both kidneys, where it almost looks like someone who has renal failure. It can have the presence of adenopathy present. You could see multifocal organ disease with kidney involvement, as well as liver and spleen, and even occasionally pancreas. Or sometimes the only thing you see is the kidney. It's commonly bilateral, more common than, let's say, renal cell or transitional, but it can be unilateral. And again, diagnosis becomes at times difficult, but very critical. When we think about the CT appearance, we talk about unilateral or bilateral, solitary or multiple masses. We talk about the appearance of infiltration or nephromegaly without a discrete mass. We talk about the fact that lymphoma is typically hypovascular and why it could look a little bit like that transitional cell I showed you before. We talk about infiltration of the peri and pararenal space, which is very classic for lymphoma. 
And we talk about how adenopathy can be bulky. And as I mentioned, splenic or renal lesions or even bone lesions are all indeed possible. Here's some schematics from an article we wrote years ago with a large solid mass in the kidney or multiple masses or infiltration or here infiltration into the perirenal space or bulky adenopathy in the periaortic region surrounding the IVC and the patient's aorta. This article nearly 20 years ago I wrote with Sheila Sheth talking about the appearance of lymphoma, often the fact that uh, it could be with B cell or other types of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, for example. In more than one half of cases, renal or perirenal spread is at presentation. Involvement by Hodgkin's disease is less common, being seen in less than 1% at presentation. Here's a good example of infiltrating kidneys. This could be lymphoma. It could be something like um, renal failure, acute shutdown. There's not only infiltration in large kidneys, but there's a loss of cortical medullary interface. So it's not the look of a renal cell, but it could be infectious inflammatory, or it could be amyloid, or it could be lymphoma, which it was. Here's another patient, periodic nodes, left renal mass, non-contrast, and then with contrast, you can see there's a left renal mass, but also extension in the perirenal space, very classic for lymphoma. Here's another example, upper pole right kidney, solid mass, infiltrating beyond the kidney into the perirenal space region, but this can surely be a renal cell carcinoma. Here's a few more images looking at it. It's infiltrating. I don't think this is the best example for a textbook of lymphoma, but this indeed was lymphoma. But you can see why it can be confusing from a clinical perspective. Here it is on late phase imaging. There's maybe a few tiny nodes near the pancreas, but then you notice there's a mass in the lower pole, the left kidney. When I see bilateral involvement, I gotta think about metastasis. I gotta think about infection. I gotta think about infarction. You could think about renal cell, but they rarely that bilateral, though they can be. But when you see bilateral disease, you gotta think about lymphoma. And when you look at the mass in the right kidney now on delayed phase imaging and the left kidney mass, you got to think this could be lymphoma. Now here's another patient with B-cell lymphoma with multiple lesions in both kidneys. The lesions are small, but they're multiple. If the patient was immunosuppressed, you could say something like aspergillosis, candidiasis, maybe at multiple abscesses. That would be in the differential diagnosis with the right history, but that was not the history. And this was the patient's presentation, and this was lymphoma, a really nice example. And you'll notice the kidneys are not even enlarged. Another example of perirenal infiltration, that's classic for lymphoma. And again, the kidney is compressed, partly infiltrated, but the predominance of the tumor is sitting in the perirenal and pararenal space. There are a range of things, and I think I'll show you a list of them that involve the peri and pararenal space. It can be unilateral or bilateral. It could be extramedullary hematopoiesis. It could be a prior bleed. It, there's a number of things that could do it, but lymphoma is always on the top of my list. Here's another example where there's infiltration of the perirenal and pararenal space by the left kidney, but there's also extensive tumor extending in the periaortic region and tracking from the left to the right side. And this was also going to be lymphoma. This is more typical for lymphoma with the peri and pararenal space infiltration and the bulky disease surrounding the aorta as well. I mentioned those perinephric masses with lymphoma, but also things like melanoma, but those are usually more well-defined. We talk about urinomas and hemorrhage, extra medullary hematopoiesis, retroperitoneal fibrosis, and Ehrenheim-Chester disease. But then things like Ehrenheim-Chester, you also see the infiltration around the aorta, also in the femur. So again, perinephric disease has a number of causes, but lymphoma, usually you can be very specific. Here's an example of lymphoma infiltrating the left and the right kidney, but also bulky adenopathy in the periodic regions. Very good for lymphoma. 
And again, when you see bulky disease, in this case, bulky adenopathy, I'm always thinking about lymphoma, regardless of organ involvement. The kidney involvement is just kind of the icing on the cake, but just the masses themselves make me think about lymphoma. And you can see this case is a good example how lymphoma is typically hypovascular. You're just not going to see hypervascular lymphoma. If a renal mass or infiltration shows lots of vascularity, you better be thinking about something else rather than lymphoma. Just a really nice example here as well. Okay, extensive infiltration. Now, what about this case, fever and abdominal pain? You'll notice there look like lesions in the liver and in the spleen. Could be metastatic melanoma, could be sarcoidosis. Is there something in the right kidney? Well, there is, and there's something in the left kidney. Now, sarcoid can give you lesions, kidney, liver, spleen, but they're usually small lesions. These are larger, more solid lesions, particularly in the liver and also in the left kidney. Could be metastatic disease, that's a possibility, melanoma. These lesions are relatively hypovascular, so melanoma is a good thought. Could it be a renal cell carcinoma? I don't like that. The other thing to think about when you start looking at bilateral renal masses, involvement of the liver, involvement of the spleen, you got to be thinking about lymphoma. As you go to excretory phase imaging, the lesions show better in the liver, spleen, and kidneys. And this was a really nice example of lymphoma with multi-solid organ involvement at time of presentation. And this was a B-cell lymphoma. So again, lymphoma can present only in the kidney or with multi-organ involvement. So just a really nice example of that. Another patient, microscopic hematuria on the non contrast exams is something by the lower pole of the right kidney. It's something infiltrating, and then there are subtle things in the left kidney. The history made everybody think about infection, but it doesn't look like a renal abscess. But those other small lesions in the cortex, particularly in the left kidney, could this be just focal infarcts or infection? Everyone was thinking about inflammatory disease, but it didn't quite make sense. Larger mass, lower pole right kidney multiple lesions in the contralateral left kidney. What are we dealing with here? I don't see any other organ involvement. I don't see adenopathy. Well, this was worked up and this was primary renal lymphoma. And I do want to make the point that I said in the beginning of this talk that lymphoma can look very similar to an infiltrating tumor like transitional cell carcinoma. But when lymphoma is focal and patients present with fever, one of the considerations is an abscess. We've seen abscesses be confused as lymphoma and lymphoma be confused as abscesses. In this case, people looked at the left kidney and thought that little defects were probably infection or infarction when there were really small sites of additional lymphoma and the dominant mass in the lower pole of the right kidney was indeed lymphoma. A really nice example of primary renal lymphoma presenting with bilateral involvement. Now, to put that in perspective, what about this case? There's a patient's febrile and there's a lesion in the left kidney. It looks solid, not very vascular. That's the only thing we see. And the thought here perhaps was, could this be lymphoma? Patient had a urinalysis. The urinalysis was positive. This wasn't lymphoma. This was pyelonephritis. This was a renal abscess. Again, solid mass. I'll go back through it. Even on the cinematic, it's solid. Maybe necrotic, better shown on the cinematic, but it's focal. I got to think about this being tumor and lymphoma is a thought, but this was a renal abscess. Again, the overlap between renal processes like infection and tumor can be significant, not just from the imaging perspective, but also from the perspective of clinical presentation. So another patient with sickle cell disease, big right kidney, low density, there's a mass here. Now with the history and it's sickle cell, perhaps you're going to be correct, you'll get a urinalysis, and this ends up being an abscess. But you could imagine why you could think about this being a necrotic tumor 
and why the possibility of lymphoma at least crosses your mind based on some of the other cases I gave you, or this patient with a cystic right renal mass, where maybe I don't think about lymphoma, but I think about a cystic renal cell carcinoma, ends up being an E. coli abscess. So I do want to make the point that abscesses at times can be confused with tumor. The history can be the same, fever, weight loss, patients tired, all the symptoms you think about malignancy, but again, the importance of urine culture, because in these cases, the urine culture is classically going to be positive, and you'll make the right diagnosis. So again, there is a challenge, a good article, talking about some of the pseudotumors in looking at the kidney and how renal infection, infarction, and abscesses can very much simulate a tumor, and you can be confused either way, and this could delay diagnosis and delay management. So it's something you need to think about and something you will need to act on. Now, what else have I not covered? One of the things I have not covered is metastasis. So let's do this. Let's stop there, and let's come back in a few minutes and finish part five of our series. See you then. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.